I've been blacklisted for a long time now in Swaziland by the pink list killers, by the world auto authorities who will not give me any passport, by the banks who will not have me open a bank account, and by YouTube who deleted entire channels, channels of mine and about 400 videos deleted that are gone forever now. So if you punch the words, the order of the garter in YouTube, my film with 10,000 views will never be shown. But instead of that, even videos with only 50 views and even all the garter pranks and muff divers sticking their heads under a woman's dress taking a female's garter off her thighs with their teeth and what not. All of this is shown to the slaves and by, this, and by the slaves, but not my film. Everything else but my film, because it was made by Sean Ross. And so all my films get shadow banned so not many people are offered the opportunity to watch and learn from them. Here, look, this is YouTube here. I punched in Order of the Garter in the search machine. So here's a film with 5,000 views. And if I scroll down, look, The, these are all the official ones, you know, from the, the, the media, the Telegraph, the AP here. Of course, they come first, you know, Pharaoh's word. You know, look, NBC Sports. I mean, what's, what's that NBC Sports got to do with, uh, with the Order of the Garter? It's a good sport, you know, to put a garter around your thigh, isn't it? Isn't it? You know, British Pathé. Of course, they know the, uh, they're, they're supposed to, to tell you the official story, the Daily Mail, you know, 3,000 views here. Look, only 93 views, this one here. Global News, AP. Oh. Hello, darling. This one here, Enoch Metatron, is my name, but, but my film doesn't, doesn't get shown. <laughs> it doesn't even say Order of the Garter in the title, and it shows. How does he do that? The Garter, oh, look here. He got all the muff divers here, you know, he's, he's going to dive on the dress here, look, and everybody clapping. Oh, is that lovely, eh? That's where all the slaves are all, it's the sort of thing they, you know, that occupies their lives, you know, whether, whether they, you know, the Order of the Garter, yeah, only 130 views. There's the Octagon, 300 views. Yeah, now... But, but but not my video. Everything else but my video. Look, nothing. Nothing at all. For, uh, I'm completely shadow banned. You know? Maybe I better stop, you know. Here, 22, 223 views, 470 views. I've got 10,000 views, it doesn't show. Yeah, 235, 100, 155 views, but not my video. Nowhere to be seen. Completely shadow banned, see? The, um, the YouTube Nazis and the Google Nazis, they don't like what I'm doing. 122 views. You know?
You remember that picture? It was black with a... Uh, with a, um, the crosshairs in it. My, not my video. Well, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm, I'm not gonna show it to the end. You know. Well, to the end, it's interesting. You're gonna see all the move divers, but not not my video. See, there's not black here. Look, all the move divers here. He's gonna do some move diving. Go under the skirts. Oh yeah, that's what the slaves like. Oh, isn't that fantastic? Hey, what a level. Go find the garter. Yeah. That's funny, isn't it? Yeah, some more move divers. The pudding gets the garter. Oh, okay, if you say so. I don't want to say it. <laughs> yeah, more move divers. And here, yeah, royal move divers. That's the level of humanity, eh? So this after the move diving. Oh, cheers! Oh, wasn't it great? Look, wasn't it great, eh? Did some move diving. 65 views. The Knight of the Garter. Well, okay, people. You got an impression, eh? It's, um, I'm not in it. I better stop. They threw me out of Daily Motion. They threw me out of Vimeo in Israel. I hardly get any views by it. You know, nobody is following me. Here in YouTube, I'm shadow banned in Brighton. I couldn't even make an account. Neither I could make an account in YouTube, but they wouldn't. Didn't let me upload. I, I just have no chance. I don't have a place where I can make my videos. Really, well, for the moment I have, but I'm not. I'm not sure how long it's going to take. Entirely blacklisted all over. Here. Yeah. And YouTube even takes away my own comments, like under this video here. There's the title, Behold the Pale Horse Unicorn of the Order of the Garter for the Union of the Old World's Order with the New World's Order. It is 10,000 views, August 15th. And I'm very sure I took my time couple of days because you know i got 600 comments here so it needs days you know uh, in which time i can't make any other videos because i'm commenting you know but um you know i, I, I don't like it when youtubers you know they get arrogant and you know they because they have a lot of views you know, I, I don't want to do that and they never answer you anymore that's not my thing. So you see, I'm logged in with Sean Ross here. I can leave a comment here. Yeah, comments, Sean Ross. There you go. Um, but, you know, all my comments, they disappeared. Like this one here with 83 thumbs up and there are four replies. I, I did have my comment there and it just disappeared. Look, it's not there anymore. Here, 15 replies, 54 point, uh, thumbs up. Caesar did his thumb up, eh? But my, you see, my logo, the green logo, it's it's never, never, it's, it's nowhere to be seen anymore. You see? So YouTube even deletes my own comments, you know, so people can't even, they don't even see it that I'm, commenting so this is the logo to show it one more time with the glasses and the flag i didn't have anything else with me you know to make a uh, an icon so i just used the stuff i had in my backpack you see it's nowhere to be seen and it was there so youtube is even deleting my own comments you know what a shame. Canada belongs to the crown and the Canadians are slaves of the royals. Therefore, the Canadian flag has the red and white colors of the pharaonic royal houses of the Père Het White House and the Père Tasser Red House. It has a square in white 
for the concept of four, and in red, a big fleur de lis and symbol of the French nobility, as both the royal old world order and the Templar a new world order were founded in France, and the new world order eventually realized in Switzerland. And each one of the three parts has again a fleur de lis. So there are altogether four times a fleur de lis in it, which is in itself the concept of three and times four, saying concept of four and three, meaning square and compass. While all the dumb slaves think <laughs> it's a maple leaf. Yeah, sure it is. Yeah, look, the whole thing is a fleur de lis, and each one of them is another fleur de lis. It's always three things in it, you know, one, two, three. And the whole thing is, is one, two, three, with the middle one, you know, in the middle. So pharaohs, they thought, oh, look, what a magnificent tree. There's a fleur de lis in it, you know. And the whole thing here is a square, you know, and this is the trinity. Here, yeah. so the concept of three, like one, two, three. So here's the concept of three. And this, the square in white for the new world's order is the concept of four. So it does say square and compass. And of course, the, you know, the new, the old, the uh, new world's order in white of the pair head, it's squeezed in between the old world's order where they come from and in the middle. That's why the fleur de lis is red, because red is the color of our masters. And underneath, in this picture here, there's even a Templar's Tau symbol, coming from the Pharaonic Ankh symbol for life, the life of Pharaoh's aristocracy only, of course. And of course, the fleur de lis is in red for the old world's order, our master's origin, and the white for the new world's order, squeezed in between two times the old world's order nobility, which was before and after, and always will be. Well, at least, that's what they hope to be. So you see here, here's, if you, if you think the upper part away, you've got a tower symbol here, here under here, the T like going from here to here and leave this away, which is from the Ankh symbol. You know, if you think here, the round circle on top of this, you get the Ankh symbol. So even this is in this picture here, there's definitely this T integrated in it, which is not a coincidence. So here you see the other flag of Canada, of Quebec, and it has the fleur de lis, which is the symbol of the French nobility. And which is the same as we just saw in red. You know, the country has it all over. And even the English nobility, they come out of the French nobility originally. And before that, they were in Rome, chased away. Before that, in Greece. Before that, in Persia. And before that, they all came from Egypt. So you've got the same trinity here. The big one here, and then two at each side. This is in blue for the war and white for the new world's order. So, um, both the old world's order with French as the worldwide aristocratic language and the Templar new world's order from Troyes were made in France. And French women, through the Jus Primae Noctis, made an alliance with the Old World's Order nobility. All in all, leading to the murder of the French man in, of, well, in World War I, making a new race of French men, who are merely sex rabbits of the bred human race, who only think la femme and l'amour all the time and therefore frenchy betraying the jaywalkers to the nazis in this horus matrix breeding of modern man 
And as the jaywalker women stayed like 100% loyal to their man, well, they had to go too in a final solution through the alliance of the European bitches and witches with Pharaoh's aristocracy. And nobody saw it coming. Well, why do you think that France is the first European country with that extensive amount of Muslims? Answer, they're next, they're next on line for Pharaoh's Horus Matrix, made in France. Therefore, it had to be in France that the global kickoff message for the actual bug war against humanity had to be given from out of France and from the very place the Knights Templars would have been annihilated if they wouldn't have had their safe haven in the Swiss Alps. The global kickoff was on April 15th, 2019, when the Paris Cathedral, Notre Dame, burned down, the very same place where the French King burned the Templars in 1314. And April 15th, the very same date, the King's prosecutor, Guillaume de Nogaret, died, about which I made this video here on my channel Homeland Security, and the title is Suspicious, Suspicious Occult Coincidences, Notre Dame Arson Fire in Paris related to Freemason Knights Templars. So Guillaume de Nogari is the most hated and most feared man of all times for the Knights Templars and the Freemasons. Just as the Notre Dame is the most hated and most feared place on earth for the Knights Templars and their Freemasons making it both the most perfect date and perfect place for the global bug war kickoff signal for a big international event being seen by the whole of humanity. So no risks that any one of them would miss out the message being sent through this occultly loaded global event. So just a few months late after the kickoff, just the time needed for necessary preparations, their Berg War started eight octagon months later in December 2019. The time needed to inform all their total lie media newspapers, TV stations, politicians, Freemason lodges, and the worldwide nobility. The fixed date for their bug war was of course on a Friday the, thir the 13th of the very same year of 2019, and octo months later. And in fact, the global bug wars against humanity started on Friday the 13th of December 2019 with Pharaoh's global media starting to indoctrinate our heads about their new invisible enemy all around us in the air we breathe. And look, they even say it themselves, the Homeland Security, they even say it, the invisible enemy. And of course, the government themselves knows best about invisible enemy because they produce them themselves as here in a CIA manual entitled Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. The invisible enemy, like the invisible hand of Freemasonry.
They even say it themselves here in the middle of the Templar's cross. Do not forget. Yeah, Friday the 13th. So Friday the 13th in 1307 was the date on which the Knights Templars got arrested, imprisoned and consequently tortured, which is a date their New World Order Freemasons use to attack humanity. Like the big wave of kebab war attacks starting on Friday the 13th of November 2015 and of course in Paris, Per Isis, France, where also the Old World Order and the New World Order started in France. And here you see the multi-site, multimodal terrorist attacks in Paris on Friday the 13th. You see, there were four attacks simultaneously, which is the concept of four, which is us, the base of a pyramid. The base of a pyramid is a square with four corners or four sides, which is us. We are down at the hierarchy and down at the pyramid. So this is a war against us. There is the concept of four. This is not a coincidence, people. Through the kebab wars, our masters had hoped to spark a global race war, but it didn't work because the white slaves are tired of waging wars after two devastating nobility world wars. This is called chronic combat fatigue. So they came up with plan B the bug wars with the B for bug. Come on now, people. Even the children know that B is for bug. Please understand, I can't pronounce nor show certain words nor show certain images because of global censorship and the machine recognizing certain words and images. So I had to invent my own words like bug war, kebab war, jaywalker, pinkless killer, Nubians and the rest. Sorry for that. Just outsmarting the machine. So because of the censorship, I have to let you read this in silence. It means, I can't pronounce it for you, but it means kill the stars. Just like the Canadian flag showing the concept of four and three, there's also this Harry Potter logo of the Deathly Hallows, where you can see three triangles and one circle. For the concept of three and all together four times and two times a 90 degrees square made by the vertical line on the horizontal line so here you see like also this is one triangle the big one this is number one here's one a triangle and here's one so there are three and the circle all of these are the concept of three, so four times, which is the concept of four also. And here, this line here, the vertical touching the horizontal, it gives 90 degrees here. Thus, the logo saying square and compass for the initiated ones and being smacked into the subconscious minds of our children, preparing the erasure of innocence on another level. All these logos, secret symbols and encoded messages through numbers 
are very important to our masters, like the numbers of the beast 666, which I explain in this video here. After a vision I had 40 years ago, that the 666 is in fact www. The internet being created by CERN Switzerland, through which you can buy or sell. And this video I made it like 2012, almost 10 years ago, on my channel Hatzefrat. Yeah. So the first step you have to take if you want to understand this number 666 is to visualize this number into Roman ciphers because at the time like seven in the year 70 when the vision was received we didn't have these Arabic ciphers yet which we call Arabic ciphers, but in fact, they come from India. So, and these ciphers, they came with the uh, Islamic expansion in the seventh century before we had these sort of ciphers. And if you have a vision, which I had, it's many times it's blurry, you know, and you have to interpret it. So the thing he saw was this here, but there was nothing in that time that resembled this sort of a W. So with all the lines here, you know, like this, he thought it was this, 666, and not this. And with this, you can buy and sell. And now very soon, with their bug war and their green pass, it's already happening. They're going to stop you from buying and selling unless you have the green pass. And then you can go into the internet and, and buy and sell, even in shops. But this is happening now. And the Roman W, it was like, you know, like this, very round. It's called the Uncial. So there was really nothing else that resembled this. Only this resembled this. And this here shouldn't be visualized like this but it should be like this. But 666 is maybe not the same as 666, which stands in fact on the one US dollar bill inside the MDCCLXXV1 for 1776 where 666 is DCL XV1. So as you all know, there's nothing new. This here, MDCC LXXV1, it adds up to 1776. But in this number, it stands on the $1 bill. Well, I'm not gonna show you that thing again, the $1 bill, that means. But here, D, C, L, X, V, 1, it stands for 666. You know, the D is 500 and the C is 100. So that makes a 6 or 600, but, you know, in 666. Here's the 6. Then L, X, L is 50. You, know, you can find it here, 50 plus 10 it's 60 so that you know covers one of the o's of 600 so you get 660 and then v1 is 6 and that covers the last o from 600 so inside the one dollar bill it does say 666 
And of course, the usual pink list killers, they love to wear t-shirts with these letters on it, which is the Roman numeral of the beast. Now, D was 500, C is 100, so you get 600, L is 50, X is 10, so you get 60, so you already got 660, and V1 is 6, so it says 666. And all the pink list killers, they know this. But now, the interesting thing I'm going to show you now, if you distract this number, the DCLXV1 from the MDCCLXXV1, you get another number. And if you distract 666 from 1776, you get 1110, which is also a binary number of ones and o's like used in your computer and now just think of what i just told you before that the 666 if you visualize it as a v1 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 roman ciphers it, you get www dot the internet the internet binary code Thus, reading in the binary code 161616610, or 1DC, 1LX, 1V1. And what happened in the year 1110, here you can see it, 1110. The Order of the Brothers Hospitallers of Jerusalem was created. They later became known as the Order of the Hospitallers, rivals of the Order of the Temple. Well, they were not really rivals, it was all the same bunch. So, what happens if you distract the ones who helped founding the New World Order? from the year in which the New World Order was founded in the US. So you get 1776 minus 1110 is 666. So these were like the ones who helped founding the New World Order when they were founded. And this is the date when the New World Order was founded in the US. And if you distract that, you get this number. So, what happens if you distract the ones who helped founding the New World Order from the year in which the New World Order was founded in the US? You get 1776 minus 1110 is 666. So 1776, the year the New World Order got founded in the US, you distract this number of the ones who helped founding the New World Order, the, these hospitalers, and you get this number. And as it says, Novus Ordo Seclorum on the one US dollar, actually meaning a new secular order. So the Antichrist will consequently not be some religious pope, but a secular person. Seclorum means worldly, as in secular. Seclorum, secular. It's almost the same word. The new worldly order. And here is the order of the Knights Templars of the Jerusalem. It says the secular order, militantes of the, the Temple of Jerusalem. A pluribus unum on the one US dollar means one out of many. Here, yeah, one from many. As in where we go one, we go all. From the Templar saying, one for all and all for one. 
e pluribus unum. One from many. Same thing. The Antichrist is not anti or against Christ, or as Americans say, anti Christ. As in the English language, it is a very bad translation out of Latin and leading to all those false Hollywood movies showing the dude as the devil, <laughs> which he's not. In British English, you say anti, which should have been pronounced, pronounced anti in proper English grammar pronunciation, just as the Americans pronounce the word anti as it should be according to the English pronunciation rules. Therefore, in English, the word antichrist is being pronounced correctly and with an E at the end of anti, but it is being written in a totally misleading way with an I at the end of anti and of course done so on purpose by the secular masters. So in French it's they make a difference here as you can see here. This is the real word of it anti and in English you would pronounce this anti here and then they write it like this and this you would pronounce anti Christ Christ in English. But because this here anti Christ it actually is anti Christ. So that's why this here the writing of today in English is being pronounced like this here anti Christ. It's all mixed up in on purpose and this anti it comes from the word anterior, which is correctly written in French, but not at all in English. So from now on, all you Bible bangers, please don't write this word in the misleading Hollywood manner anymore. Here it says anti from anterior, anti. So, in fact, the bloke is anti with an e at the end from the word anterior, meaning before, as being written here in French in the correct way with an e, anti. So, he is the guy coming before Christ and paving the way, apparently, whom the jaywalkers call the Moshiach ben Yosef, paving the way for the real deal, called Moshiach ben David, their Messiah. So you see, their Moshiach ben David has a crown, because he's from the royal house of King David, just like the Christian Jesus is. And the Moshiach ben Yosef has a crown of thorns, because in the J. Walker books he is described as a good man fighting for justice, who has suffered tremendously. So, whether the bloke be the Christian Jesus Christ or the J. Walker Moshiach ben David, in both cases, he is from the nobility house of King David, who was a slayer of man, a genocider, and a collector of women, whom he no doubt raped as well. So you see, I read the Bible, I read the Old Testament, this is from the Old Testament, Samuel 18, 6 to 8. I also read the New Testament. I'm not a Christian, I'm not a Muslim, and I'm not a jaywalker. So this is from the New King James Version. I am a historian. So here it says, 
So the people went out into the field of battle against Israel. You see, a battle against Israel, against the jaywalkers. And the battle was in the woods of Ephraim. The people of Israel were overthrown there before the servants of David. Now, who are the servants of David? You know, we can see it happening today with the global blue army killing us, you know, preparing for the big kill in their uniforms, just like the Einsatzgruppen, the SS. You know, and the great slaughter of 20,000 took place that there, that day. I mean, 20,000 is a lot in our days, but in those days, it, you know, it was immense. So King David and his servants, you know, meaning his soldiers and uh, his, um, his uniformed armed force, they murdered 20,000 Israelites. I read in, in the German version that it really says the word Israelites. So King David, he murdered 20,000 Israelites, well, etc. And, well, I, I, you know, I, I could do a whole video about this, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to show that all to you here. But King David, he did one genocide after the other. So the guy was a butcher, a genocider, and, and a collector of women. Yeah, you can read it yourself. You know, it's not me, you know, who have been writing this down. So he murdered 20,000 jaywalkers. Why? Because this is a king. Yeah, he's a pharaoh. The whole Old Testament, it's, it's only about kings and genocides, I tell you. It's a horrible book. It's only about one genocide after the other, and the kings are doing it. And it was not only King David and King Solomon. There are loads of like Middle Eastern pharaonic kings, you know, doing this. And even killing their own jaywalkers. Israel, here it says. Yeah, Samuel 23. And David came to his house at Jerusalem. And the king took the ten women, his concubines. You see, his concubine. What is a concubine? You know, you, you use them in bed, don't you? Eh? Whom he had left to keep the house and put them in ward and fed them, but were not in unto them. Now, why, if he doesn't go into them, uh, you know, or unto them, why, does he, why do they call them the concubines? Come on now, eh? So they were shut up unto the day of their death living in widowhood and here as well you know uh, the, the the story about Bathsheba there was this uh, soldier and uh, King David really liked his wife so I had the soldier killed you know send him into the war and to the front as cannon fodder so you could take the woman he was really a, a collector of uh, of women you know reminds me of uh, Prince Andrew and the uh, the Jeffrey Epstein Island of the nobility, which was a Templar's island. So David might not have killed Goliath. Goliath. David is perhaps best known for fighting and killing the giant and Philistine champion Goliath with a slingshot, a suitable, awesome fate for the future king of Israel. But the Bible betrays some doubt about who deserved the credit. The second book of Samuel states that it was a man called Elhanan rather than David who bested the Philistine giant. He was both hero and anti-hero, so not, should say, anti-hero. Right? So the Americans pronounce it right. David, as depicted in the Hebrew Bible, is above all a man of profound contradictions. He is described, described as a man after God's own heart by one biblical author, author and a blood-stained fiend of hell. Yeah. 
by another. The word Satan is used in the Hebrew Bible to describe David as an adversary. You see, Satan, yeah? And the Messiah is supposed to come out of the house of David, of out of this Satan, yeah? The Moshiach. So even, even the Hebrews, you know, they say he's Satan. He's a, and, and he was, really. He's depicted as feigning madness in a cowardly attempt to avoid the wrath of the king of the Philistines. And he carried off the wife of a man named Nabal after shaking him down for flocks and herds and a threat of violence. God do the same to me and more, vowed David as he and his army approached the estate of Nabal. According to the earthly translation of the King James Version, well, I read it in the German Version, same thing. And if I leave alive until morning, a single one who pisses against the wall. David was a stud. David means beloved of both God and humankind, especially women. It was the latter who used to chant, much to the consternation of David's, David's predecessor, King Saul. Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. This guy was a butcher. And out of this guy, you know, should come out of the house of David, the royal house of David with a crown on his head, should come this Messiah or the, or the Christ or the Moshiach. Come on, people, the apple doesn't fall very far from the tree. He even killed his own jaywalker people by the tens of thousands. So, well, you can read the rest yourself. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not a theologist. I'm an historian. And I've got a real bad gut feeling about this because it doesn't fit. So, King David is a bit of a, a royal mixture between the Afghan slayer, Prince Harry, and the child rapist, Prince Andrew. You see, nothing has changed. And it's still these pharaonic princes and kings abusing the slaves. So, honestly, as an historian, there's no good prognostics about this Messiah thing coming out of Pharaoh's house of manslayers and women rapists. I've got a bad gut feeling about it. It says in the Bible in Samuel 18, 7, that King David, ancestor of the awaited one, killed 20,000 Israelites. And in Samuel 23, he imprisoned 10 girlies, like Prince Andrew on Jeffrey Epstein's island. So King David and his men of aristocratic descent murdered 20,000 jaywalkers, just as we see it happening today with Pharaoh's worldwide army killing us. And you see how they wrote it down, you know, 20,000. They wrote everything down, all the numbers, just as the Nazis did. And it's still this, and they are the same ones. The Nazi Templars, it's the aristocracy, it's Pharaoh, like King David. They're writing the numbers down because they like it. Well, I'd say we clean it up ourselves, the Germanic way instead of waiting for some messiah out of Pharaoh's royal house of butchers and child rapists. And look, there's even the royal Gibraltar police. Well, whom do they serve, eh? Just like King David and his servants killing 20,000 jaywalkers. These are the servants of the royals, the Templars here, Le Fleur de Lys, where they came from, which is the symbol of the of the French nobility, another Templar's cross. They are the ones they serve, and it's it says in the logo, 
the octagon logo by the way we all know by now what pharaoh is doing to our australian brothers and sisters being put in real concentration camps today september 2021 and coming up for all of us worldwide as concentration camps is a pharaonic invention anyway and look whom they serve with honor this pharaonic royal worldwide blue army yes the templars and the crown or do you think that red and white nazi templar cross in the original colors and pharaoh's crown also with red and white in it for pharaoh's red house per tasser and pharaoh's white house per het are accidentally there on the enemy's badge saying oh with honor we serve pharaoh's worldwide blue army serves a crown and the nazi templars and they definitely not serve the people nor your children so one more time in french they say it right calling the dude l'ante christ the one who comes before by the way the jaywalkers don't hate the christian christ they just don't accept him as their moshiach or messiah because in their moshiach story there is no resurrection well, that's all their messiah only comes once and not twice and it even says so in the bible in corinthians 15 12 to 22 the resurrection of the dead but i read it for you but if it is preached that christ has been raised from the dead how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead if there is no resurrection of the dead then not even christ has been raised and if christ has not been raised our preaching is useless and so is your faith more than that we are then found to be false witnesses about god for we have testified about god that he raised christ from the dead but he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised for if the dead are not raised then christ has not been raised either and if christ has not been raised your faith is futile you are still in your sins then those also who have fallen asleep in christ are lost if only for this life we have hope in christ we are of all people most to be pitied it's very important to understand that those bloodthirsty romans killed and crucified jesus on his cross showing the horizontal and vertical rule of our masters because of pharaoh's internal war between the horizontal new world order and the vertical old world order here it says the roman republic i'll read it for you rome was founded about 509 before christ romans founded a new type of government called a republic in a republic people chose officials to represent them and the highest form of government in rome was the senate 
Senators were wealthy landowners called patricians, as we can still see today. Eh, Mr. Trump, Biden, Macron and the rest of them. So you see the Roman Parliament. So Rome was a horizontal Republican rule. And Jesus, out of the royal house of King David, the vertical old world order. And this is why the Republican Romans hung that humiliating shield around his neck on the cross, saying, Inri, for Jesus Nazarenus Rex Judeorum in Latin, meaning Jesus from Nazareth, the king of the jaywalkers. The whole story about the king of the jaywalkers tells the story about the nobility's internal war. And as Rome was a republic with a senate, parliament and all that, they didn't want to hear about any royal descendants' houses and its kings with big palaces. Jesus, with only sandals on a donkey, tells the same tale and metaphor as two poor Templars on one horse. So both allegories tell the same story about poor noblemen without a kingdom, whether it be the Knights Templars or the descendants like Jesus of the King David, also without a kingdom because the Roman Empire, the Republic, didn't want it. You see the dudes here already doing the hidden hand, the right hidden hand under the jacket, because the Freemasons, they come out of the Knights Templars. And this is old people, this is ancient stuff, and they're already showing it. And here, look, there's the concept of three, here, to, to breathe in, like, uh, which is them, meaning, you know, this is the, uh, the nobility, that's where they come from. So, as there's nothing good coming out of this whole nobility who think they are gods and sons of God, I can hardly imagine that a descendant of them and from the royal pharaonic house of King David is going to save us. Therefore, and as everything is a lie by our masters, in which they changed the whole history by showing always themselves in the end as the heroes, the saints, the Peace Nobel Prize winners, and as the victors of everything. It must therefore be assumed that the Saviour is not the one from Pharaoh's house of David, but rather the one who comes before and consequently gets murdered by our masters to be replaced with their own one, as usual, and as they always do. Therefore, if there will be a saviour of man at all, it will be the anti-Christ with an E, the one who comes before, whom the jaywalkers call the Moshiach ben Yosef, who has suffered tremendously to help mankind, and not the other one, the royal one, just taking all the glory for himself, for which the Moshiach ben Yosef, the anterior Christ, the anti Christ with an E, has worked so hard for. This is why the satanic Hollywood the TV, Pharaoh's media, and all those books and newspapers all portray the one who comes before as someone bad and evil. Because in the end, their own man or entity is supposed to get all the credit in order to continue to abuse humanity. 
The only solution is to believe in ourselves and clean the mess up ourselves because we can't take the risk anymore and wait any longer for that undefined celestial help for without any proofs and without any certainty at all and in that bible they don't even talk about you as the bible is an oriental book for middle easterners only in which their middle eastern god didn't even know about the existence of europeans or asians we ain't in it not even in the bible you're in it the bible stops at the mediterranean because god did not know there were any white race europeans or chinese another thing some dogmatic bible bangers keep repeating all the time in my mails in the comments is the jesuits but no one ever tells me why nor does anyone brings me any facts at all so without knowing why exactly they all say that the jesuits control the world probably after having believed for so many years the jaywalkers rule the world or everything at the same time probably okay here we go the jesuits it's very simple if you know how the world works so these are the two videos i'm going to refer to in a moment here's the title and it is on the israeli platform and also on youtube but i don't remember which channel maybe it's on my gure channel or maybe it's on my gatsefrat channel i don't remember and this one as well so there are two videos the swiss beast home of the devil part four in this uh, channel here so and i already explained to you in several videos how protestantism was founded by the knights templars in order to destabilize the french king who traditionally was together with the pope and catholicism and therefore only 17 years later after the beginning of protestantism on october 31st in 1517 by martin luther in germany the jesuits were founded on august the 15th 1534 in paris the capital of the french king in order to destroy his adversaries the protestants it was most of all the frenchman pierre favre who founded the jesuits accompanied by two basques francis xavier and ignatius de loyola the latter becoming the first general of this french organization of the jesuits here it's the same thing as always as ignatius de loyola was an aristocrat and born in a castle he got all the glory of being the father of the jesuits who were in fact founded here in montmartre paris france as the french king was behind it all in order to crush the knights templars the freemasons and their protestantism you can read it montmartre 15 août 1534 august the 15th 1534 only 17 years later after martin luther uh, went to the church in wittenberg in germany and um, 
put the 95 uh, claims on the uh, on the door so on one side templars the new world's order and their protestants and on the other side the jesuits out of the old world's order and its catholicism it says a relation of the voyage to siam performed by six jesuit sent by the french king although the templars officially not existing anymore but they were still there the templars and jesuits were fierce enemies of each other at that time but now all together peacefully amongst each other in the united world order in which in fact the templars sort of won you might say so just as monarchs and templars have unified in the order of the garter today so have jesuits and templars unified in which templars take over the military actions for the octagon of the nazi templars and in which the jesuits take care well they tend to take care of the educational and religious tasks in the union while the freemasons take care of the political tasks and the bankers present the economical tasks so i understand that when a protestant sees so many influential personalities attending prestigious jesuit schools that the jesuits therefore have presumably acquired all the power for them totally ignoring though that these old enemies of templars and jesuits have been all united now because they all come out of pharaoh's aristocracy the knights templars were all noblemen and so was ignatius de loyola born in the castle of loyola which you can see here the masters have since long made peace with each other but the slaves are still at war with each other and divided as usual not knowing what's really going on divide et impera divide and rule dumb slaves still divided over nothing and over a problem that wasn't even theirs in the first place all this and the 30-year war between protestants and catholics was all part of the internal aristocratic war within the nobility only the dumb slaves don't know it yet especially those stubborn dogmatic religious freaks whether they are catholics protestants muslims or jaywalkers the slaves are still divided over an initially internal quarrel within pharaoh's nobility from where the entire religion comes from anyway like the 42 divine principles of ma'at holding all the ten commandments within in order to make pharaoh's obedient slaves while our masters kill us by the millions our masters steal millions and use endless lies as their primary weapon against us and we are supposed to keep some entirely useless ten commandments out of the box of pharaonic fairy tales filled with religious hocus pocus another date that keeps coming back all the time in history is september the 11th also called 9 11 or like the promulgation of the weimar constitution 
of September the 11th, 1919, after the abdication of the German monarchy. So a very important and very bad day for Pharaoh. Here you can read that following the Wilhelm II abdication and the German revolution, all German nobility as a legally defined class was abolished. On promulgation of the Weimar Constitution on 11th September 1919, you read it, 11th September. So, of course, it has something to do with 9 11 because this is a very bad day for Pharaoh. You know, very important day. Here I go on. All such Germans were declared equal before the law. Uh, there were 22 heads of these former federal states titled as for the four kings of Germany, Prussia, Bavaria, Saxony, and Württemberg. There were also six grand dukes, five dukes, and seven princes who along with all their heirs, successors, and families, lost their title and domains. They lost their castles, they lost their titles, everything. So, you know, this is one of the reasons, you know, they did the, uh, the New York attacks on 9-11. The German emperor fled Germany. So September the 11th, the day of the constitution, is still remembered as a very black day for Pharaoh's nobility. Here you can read it. Kaiser Wilhelm, the emperor of Germany, fled the country. So on September the 11th, 1919, the monarchy lost everything in Germany and fearing that this phenomenon would spark worldwide. Therefore, Pharaoh chose this very same date of losing everything for the 9-11 New York attacks for the start of winning everything back. Everything they lost on that very same date and to force humanity back into a feudal system by Pharaoh's worldwide nobility. And that's why we see the fiercest at the moment in the Crown's colonies, like in Australia. So whoever thought that 9-11 was related to the abdication of the German monarchy and its promulgation of the Constitution on September the 11th. Nice, we see. And going back even further, there's also Pharaoh's sacrificial holiday called Enkutatash on September the 11th, on 9-11, and nowadays still celebrated in Ethiopia, where they had Emperor Haile Selassie, another member of the Order of the Garter, also called Rastafari, who reigned from 1930 to 1972. There you go, you Rasta guys. Your idol here called Rastafari was a knight of the of the Order of the Garter and part of what you call Babylon. Uh, so maybe you should smoke a little less and change your name from Rastafari to Rastafari is a part of Babylon. And also your big Rasta reggae hero Bob Marley was a Satanist and a Freemason. Yeah, look. Just look, just look at the songs here. This song is entitled Cornerstone. The stone that the builder refuse will always be the head cornerstone. The stone that the builder refuse will always be the head cornerstone. You're a builder, baby. Here I am, a stone. Don't you pick and refuse me. Because the things people refuse 
are the things they should choose. <clears throat> you know, this is a um, this is a praise to Freemasonry, the cornerstone. Very important to them. You find it on the one dollar bill, eh? So I propose a title for your next Rasta reggae song. Too much smoke, no good. Mariana, weapon of Babylon, to create dumb slaves who sing the same melody over and over again for the political indoctrination hypnosis over and over again for the sleep all sleep all and narcotica narcotica narcotics it means sleep for the sleep all ras ta fa ri ras means a prince in ethiopian semitic language ras almost sounding like ros and ras is most likely from horus the prince and fa in pharaonic demotic means to arrive and ri the sun and ta i don't know without my books so ras fari means horus arrives from the sun and tafari was his original name of the emperor haile selassie called the prince tafari ras tafari i told you so it's always pharaoh's aristocracy behind it all and taking all the glory being adorned as in that king david messiah story and here the messiah is called emperor haile selassie rastafari it's always the same master slave show the cat and mice show here it says rastafarianism it's a religious cult based on a belief that ras tafari the prince tafari haile selassie is the messiah and that africa and especially ethiopia is the promised land because rastafari haile selassie also is a direct descendant of king david and his son king solomon you all see the the line of the nobility here eh? the very same religious hocus pocus to worship some pharaonic king or emperor as if he were god himself and for the slaves oh so nice to be part of an influential group with big shots like kings and emperors to be honored in this pure idolatry of pharaoh being the total deceptive contradiction about what they sing about love and freedom and whatnot the emperor haile selassie rastafari was a direct descendant of king solomon and the queen of sheba therefore the line of king david with a crown on its head and red eyes also the general line of the nobility and the seal of solomon and also the swiss cross here this is a swiss cross on a red underground in the royal banner of rastafari the emperor haile selassie of the direct descendant of king solomon and also of king david of course and of course wearing the same pharaonic sash octagons and templars crosses on his chest as the rest of these pharaohs now look there's the octagon a templars cross here's the sash 
And this is what a pharaoh looks like. They've got these very long noses. Also the European kings do have that. Go and have a look. So when a descendant of King David and King Solomon is wearing a whole bunch of octagons, Templars crosses and pharaonic sashes on his chest, then what are King Solomon and King David? Well, pharaohs, of course, also called the Erev Rav, just as the rest of this worldwide nobility. Yeah, look, here's a picture of um, the French president Valéry Giscard d'Estaing in the 70s with his ancestor Rameses the Great, Rameses II, whom he had come to France on, and who was the mummy, of course, and at the airport of uh, Bourget, a military airport next to Paris, he was the mummy, was received with uh, military honours by the Republican Guard. And I already gave you the pictures on, I think it was on my channel, Gure. And I went filming his castle uh, this year. I made a video about this uh, a couple of weeks back. And he was this French president and the friend of uh, the emperor, the African emperor. Well, he was uh, he was living in a in a real castle and of a line of um, of real French kings, and so was his wife. Well, you can see the resemblance. It's exactly the same lineage. There's no doubt. Yeah, look, this is a fair, a funny French comparison. The mummy of Ramses II. It um, it gives uh, three millions of dollars by the tourist a year in Egypt, and ours cost us two and a half million euros a year. So the actual president cost about the same price as the ancestor, you know, um, gives back in Egypt by the tourists. <laughs> well, I'll let you look at this one in silence. the voice of the mummy talking to you the return of the mummy so here's the whole deal in wikipedia about Haile Selassie the emperor and um, he was a member of the Solomonic dynasty there it pops out the Solomonic dynasty, also known as the House of Solomon, was a dynasty of the Ethiopian Empire formed in the 13th century. Its members claim lineal descent from the biblical king Solomon and the queen of Sheba. So, and who traces lineage to Emperor Menelik, the son of King Solomon and Makeda, the queen of Sheba. So here is Rastafari in Wikipedia. And here it says, Rastas accord key importance to Haile Selassie, the emperor of Ethiopia between 1930 and 1974. Many regard them as the second coming of Jesus and Jah incarnate. Jah is their name for uh, God. Uh, from Yahweh, of course, Yahweh. So it's always the aristocracy who are the holy ones and the saints and the pharaohs and uh, and we are their slaves. And they all got lions like here and with crowns and uh, they see themselves as gods, really. They behave like gods. That's why Jesus is the son of God from the house of King David. And this one is the, uh, out of the house of King Solomon who was the son of King David. You know, we have to adorn and to worship these pharaohs who think they are gods. They pretend they are gods, raping our children and, and pushing into endless wars. And now, you know, the whole feudal system coming back. This is why in Germany, this pyramid concept of three hand sign was found in a tomb 
of some RF RAV pharaonic descendant using of course the same letter type it's so simple people just like anywhere else in the world there are the masters and the slaves in this case the jaywalker slaves and the RF RAV pharaonic masters both using the same Hebrew letter type when Prince Charles or his mummy the Queen writes in English does that mean they are one of us no of course not so if a Semitic master also of the pharaonic bloodline writes in Hebrew showing Pharaoh's concept of three does that mean he's a jaywalker slave no of course not the normal jaywalkers i know through my youtube videos they're absolutely disgusted by these sort of things and they're even more disgusted to find it on a tomb with hebrew letters on it i can promise you that these are not jaywalkers doing these sort of things these are all of pharaonic descent and satanists showing their all-seeing eye the pyramid where they all come from and the jaywalkers i know like in israel or in los angeles they say that israel is a fascist state with a nazi government ruled by the nazis <laughs> and, and these are jaywalkers in their so-called own countries you know it's it's everywhere the same wherever you go in the world look some more nubian pharaohs and uh, it was the nubian kings actually who enslaved and and chained their own slaves their own nubian slaves you know and put them in chains to sell them to the uh, to the to the slave drivers who were also of uh, aristocratic descent the white people never took any slaves or any nubian slaves not at all the white people the white race we were slaves we are still slaves ourselves you know of kings and queens in this still very feudal ti feudal times look at this uh this thing here as a skull of a reptilian on his chest they're all doing it well, I'm gonna stop all the showing all these pictures. There's so many pictures of it. So you see these sort of things. It's very old. It's not a new pop culture. It's from Egypt. It's pharaonic, and um, it's evil. And I don't know any jaywalkers personally who do these sort of things. It's. Um, it's by the ones who built the pyramids who own the pyramids and who rule now over us in their freemason lodges and in their castles that's why they came up now with the new triangular attack on humanity and especially in australia i'm sorry i can't pronounce its name because the machine would recognize the word and my video would be deleted in Pharaoh's total feudal dictatorship. Just look at the fourth letter in the Greek alphabet. Read its name for yourself and watch the image going with it, which you just saw on the Erev Rav tombstone and all these pharaoh pop stars doing here it is one two three four a b c d it's the fourth letter in the greek alphabet showing a pyramid with three three angles for the concepts of four and three making the seven the holy number of the pyramid so it's the fourth letter for the concept of four one two three four 
and it has three angles or three sides for the concept of three, all together making seven, the holy number of the pyramid. Saying to all their pharaonic Freemason descendants, square and compass. And the thing they call the York, here it says, the York Rite Royal Ark Triple Tau Apron Freemason Masonic Label. So this is the, uh, the Triple Tau, you see, the T, the Tau, Triple, because the Tau in itself, it has a square in it and it's a concept of four. And um, there are three of them for the concept of three. And it's all. I can't say the name, it's all this form, what all the pop stars do and what you found on the um, the Erevraaf tombstone. Here, it's all over, it's everywhere, everywhere. My whole damn page is full of it. So with that new bug war attack variety, all royals and Freemasons know the whodunit part of the pyramid war and pharaoh's curse you breathing in the mummy's dust as jfk said they're all hiding in secrecy using scientific operations for their guerrillas by night instead of armies by day and explain your kids watching Harry Potter what the Deathly Hallows really means. That it says square and compass of that death cult with their skull and bones, so therefore the name Deathly Hallows. And that all of them show the Deathly Hallows meaning your death and here it says virtus junxit mors non separabit which is latin and it means it says here what virtue hath joined death shall not cast asunder the phrase this secret organization has stolen out of the bible where the original phrase was therefore what god hath joined together let not man put asunder so the freemasons just replaced the words god and man with virtue and death because this secret brotherhood of perverts pink list killers and satanists who come out of the satanist knights templars wants to destroy the family so they can get hold of the children and turn them in something else than just a natural man or just a natural woman hello it says hello means a saint or holy person it says a saint or holy person and deathly means causing death like pharaoh holding humanity in a deathly grasp it says deathly it means relating to or causing death eh? So YouTube, why are you now with your protective uh, child service and you can't, you know, you can't show any children and, you know, just another pretext to take off videos. But with Harry Potter, you have no problem, right? Eh? So all these things like causing death and is there any problem with the, the Harry Potter for our children? Eh? Is that not a problem, YouTube? Do you hear me? The holy man and his deathly ways, as in deathly hallows, is the one being honoured in a Freemason lodge, the all-seeing eye of the Horus Matrix. 
Well, you can all see the all-seeing eye here, can't you now? It's staring right at you. Here it says HP, which is not a computer, but it means Harry Potter. Here's the all-seeing eye and the concept of three. Okay. And it looks like a snake's eye, like the one pharaoh is having on his head, like at the mask of Tutankhamun. It's a snake's eye, the eye of a reptile. Go on, you go buy that lovely t-shirt for your child, or even more appropriate, a hoodie like this. It's the same anywhere in the world, people. And the jaywalkers make no exception. They are slaves and pharaonic masters. And the jaywalkers, together with the Nubians, were the first slaves of Pharaoh. Only some of the jaywalker women made it into Pharaoh's court because of the beautiful jaywalker chicks Pharaoh digged. This is the same story, the same thing going on, you know, as today's aristocracy, Prince Philip and all the, all the womanizers, the royal womanizers. And uh, well, they're still doing the same thing or just like King David, another womanizer, another Pharaoh, same thing still going on today and throughout history. Now look, Ramses the second, in fact, had over two hundred wives. Now it's the same thing: King David, the Pharaohs, Prince Andrew, the the whole lot of them, right? Eh? And the harems of Egyptian pharaohs were heavily dependent on the pharaoh himself, and how prosperous Egypt was during his reign. The pharaoh Amenhotep the third, for example, had many wives, including many foreign wives and potentially many hundreds of women in his harem. And Ramses II, that was the guy I just showed you, the mummy, he looked exactly like the French president, you know, his descendant. And Amenhotep was specially known for strengthening Egypt, not through conquest, but through diplomacy. And his plan was simple. Since he had a surplus of gold and wanted to play nice with the rulers of various other super civilizations of the time, he would essentially trade various foreign leaders gold in exchange for their daughters and in marriage. These foreign princesses did not come to him alone, however. They each came with retinues of chamber maidens, female servants and ladies in waiting who would eventually serve as members of Amenhotep's the third's harem. Well, etc., etc. Yeah, another 370, oh, I go on, yeah. The first example of this was known from com commemorative, stone, commemorative stone scarabs that spoke of his engagement to a foreign princess named Gilu Kepe, who brought with her 317 women. What oh, a big party, eh? one for each day in the year. Amenhotep III married countless other foreign women, so it can be assumed that these other young girls brought at least many dozens of female servants with them. Now, and this is why we have the first right. We got the first right in, in Europe, raping our women in the castle. Apparently the, um, the European women in the beginning, well, they didn't want to do this. So they had to rape and, and find a law to, to do it, you know. The use prime noctis, the, uh, the first right, uh, le droit de cuissage, as they call it in French. Still the same thing, over and over again, like King David, Prince Andrew, and the whole lot of them, these royal rapists and pharaonic womanizers. Many jaywalker slaves of Pharaoh write me mails thanking me for me telling them a part of their own jaywalker history. Like my friend here, Rabbi Moshe from America, 
and many others from Israel and all over the world. Uh, this is what he wrote me on May 6, 2021. And I'm very proud of this, that an intelligent man like uh, Moshe, uh, Rabbi Moshe Perry, that he, um, he wrote me this. So he wrote me, I've been hunting for this pharaonic Swiss Nazi slime for 25 years and never came across your work until last week when I was pursuing again the Priory of Sign in relationship to the probable authorship of the protocols framing we Jews for all of their vicious crimes against humanity. It's not true that the Jews won't help you. I'm an Orthodox rabbi in Los Angeles and I will help you. Problem with us is we are too timid and trusting of the powers that be, whom I call the slime that is, or just the slime for short. We just don't know any of this. We believe the lie that all conspiracies are hoaxes, shams and sheer lunacy. But I, for one, immediately recognize the truth of your story and how it answers all of my outstanding ongoing questions which have persisted for many years until now, and how it is making it possible for me finally at long last to connect all the dots on all the various threat lines of evil being perpetrated against us, against the whole world, not against not only not just against we Jews for the past 2,000 years. Thank you for that, Rabbi Moshe. I'm very proud of receiving this mail from an intelligent guy like yourself. People, I tell you, the jaywalkers, in spite of their numerous holy books, don't know everything about their own history, just like all the other slave peoples of this earth by the way. This means the normal simple jaywalkers are not the ones in control of everything on this planet since they are desperately looking for answers themselves, just like the rest of us. As it should become evidently clear out of this next mail of Rabbi Moshe Perry from the US that the jaywalkers are not the masters of the world, as Nazi Templars and Muslims try to convince us into. And for me, I find it absolutely fascinating how a rabbi recapitulates my information in his own words and out of his own world of being an Orthodox rabbi. Well, maybe Sean Ross will end up too in one of those impressive looking thick Jaywalker books, hey? So I'll read it out for you. The Chemite plot begun by Nimrod, followed by Mitzrayim, that's Egypt and Canaan. Now here's the whole sordid sick plan they have operated under, never veering from it for over 4,000 years since a couple hundred years after the great flood of Noah, when the Chemite clan led by King Nimrod turned against their brethren Shem and Yefet and devised a mechanism by which to conquer, enslave and rule over the entire earth undetected until they could find a way to eliminate everyone, not them, and then have the entire earth to themselves without even uh, God being able to stop him. They thought they had his, this one several times in history before, like at the Tower of Babel, but they failed. But here's the point. They have never given up, no matter how many times their satanic machinations were foiled. And now, as a result, 4,000 years later, they are on the verge of total victory via their evil uh, well, I call it Pharaoh's uh, poison. Well, you can read what it is. I, I can't pronounce it because of the machine people. There's more, but this will do. 
This tract in this video reads similar to the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, who my good friend Dr. Sean Ross has proven was written by the Priory of Zion in Switzerland, in the town of Zion. The Priory are or were the spiritual and political head of the Knights Templar. They are not Europeans and were never Christians, only pretended to be. They're all pharaonic Egyptians who invaded France during the late Roman Empire in the year 300. They also came down north from Norway and may have formed the original feared, dreaded and loathed Vikings. In any event, these two entities built up all of Europe, all the castles and cathedrals. They even came to control the church. They comprised the entirety of the royal and nobility families of the world. To a man and a woman, they were all members of the Nazi party. They own everything via their banks and fascist corporations. Before the jig was up in France, they secretly slipped away and established themselves in Switzerland, took the place over and declared a state in August of 1291. They have ruled from there ever since, and they are now about to close down and eff effectively end human history as we know it, unless we find a way to stop them. Truth out. Rabbi Moshe Perry, Los Angeles, America. Thanks, bro. Uh, fascinating. And, um, well, Rabbi Moshe doesn't even know that I'm quoting his, uh, his mail here in my video here so i hope he likes it i hope he's not against it but i i guess he's not he's a good guy he can see you know the jaywalkers too they're desperately looking for answers because the moment you now the moment in time in human history is sort of desperate ain't it now so we should all team up together and forget the old quarrels now the jaywalker diaspora did not happen because some invisible entity in the sky said you jaywalkers were disobedient to me and you must go now no not at all the answer is far more simpler the romans two thousand years ago were genociding the jaywalkers just as those Romans did with the Europeans. Only the jaywalkers said to themselves, let's go somewhere else before the Romans kill us all. Which they eventually did 2000 years later when the Romans called themselves Nazis. As all these attacks on humanity comes from Pharaoh and the Pharaonic elite, whether it be the Romans, the Templars, the Nazis, American crimes against you name, humanity, you name it. So all of a sudden, the Pharaonic elite of the Roman province of Judea had no more slaves. As the Jaywalker slaves had all hit the road, either going to Spain, the Sephardic ones, to Eastern Europe and Germany, the Ashkenazi ones, or going to other places in the Middle East, the Mizrahim ones. So here you can see it. It all started like in this area, you know, in this era, sorry, in the first century when. Uh, when Jerusalem was attacked by the Romans in, in the year 70. So these were the Mizraim going here to, going to the uh, other Middle Eastern places like here to. These probably are the Ashkenazi going to the east and these one, the Sephardic ones going to Spain and all this. So in fact, the name Jay Walker is quite a good name because they didn't want to walk where they were supposed to walk. So here you can read it one more time. It was the uh, the Bar Kokhba revolt 
and many historians date this as the official start of the Jewish diaspora. And they didn't come, you know, to take over control over the Europeans as the Nazis and, and, the, and the Muslims say. No, no. They just ran away because the Romans were killing them. And this Bar Kokhba revolt was, um, I think, in the year 130 or something. But it was during the, the Roman invasion. So it was because of the Roman attacks and the, the Roman genocides that um, this people, they just left, you know, which was a uh, intelligent move, you know. It's an uh, intelligent jaywalker move and not walk on the pedestrian crossing, but somewhere else, like, you know, and be a jaywalker. But don't do like as the officer tell you, eh? Very intelligent, good move. And with this, Zionism was born by the Pharaonic elite of Judea, trying to get their runaway slaves back to Judea, or Zion, as they called it. So you see, the Nubians always claim having been enslaved by the white man. A white man was enslaved himself. So if white man was enslaved themselves, then who was the slave driver? Have you ever thought about that, huh? Well, it was the aristocracy of Pharaoh ruling over the Roman Empire, where no less than one third of its white population were slaves. You can read it here. One third of the population were slaves and they were white. So who's the slave driver? Can you wrap your head around that? Or this here. It's not us, the white race, behind this all. And I'll prove it to you. I already have proven it to you. In the middle, there's a square. And the circle around it represents the compass. So it says square and compass. And as the Freemasons come out of the Knights Templars or Pharaoh's nobility with their base Swaziland, so therefore the Swiss flag in the logo of the Ku Klux Klan. Because the big force behind the screens and behind Albert Pike was the Swiss Phileas Valda which I explain in this video here. So go, go watch it if you want to know it, because I'm not going to repeat it all on my channel here, but it's difficult to find. If you put the title, it won't even pop up out, you know, probably as I'm blacklisted, but try it. And otherwise it's on this channel here. Even all the slave ships belong to the Swiss. Because the Knights Templars had, and still have, a huge fleet, controlling all the seas. And I give you all the Swiss names of those Swiss slavery ship owners in this video here. So, I made it in 2016. I got a couple of views on this channel here. So here's the title, and here you can find it. If you don't find it, like punching in the title, then just scroll down. Go watch it. And of course, this video here, which I made 10 years ago, you all see, you know, the Swiss flag. It's, it's the same as the, um, as the logo of the Ku Klux Klan. There you go. There's the title. I made it here 10 years ago, in 2012, for almost 10 years. Well, in six months it will be ten years then. Look, here you can see Lord Balfour. And it was Pharaoh's nobility in 1917, England, trying to get their jaywalker runaway slaves back through the Balfour Declaration by the aristocrat Lord Balfour born in a castle 
a descendant of dukes, marquises, and earls. And when I try to find back the list of members of the Order of the Garter and try to find Lord Arthur Belfer in it, which I've seen and I filmed it in my last video, The Nobility World Wars, well, very mysteriously, it wasn't there anymore. Yeah, you can see that here. Well, it was somewhere all the way down. Now you don't see it yet. Uh, oh, look. The whole crest has been taken out here. It, you know, here. Yeah. The, the coat of arms of current knights and ladies of the guards. I, I think this is where, where I watched it, where I, I found it. Oh no, here it was. Yeah, here it was. List of current knights and lady of the guard. Or, you know, it's gone. There's just a few left, no pictures, nothing. It was very complete. It's it's gone. <laughs> oh, they took it out, you know. <laughs> Somebody took it out. And be careful, people. They want, they're working on it to make my video disappear. The nobility world wars. So you better save it and put it in the ground and make copies because they're working on it. So I had to click on my last video and try to find it for you. So here at 2 hours and 43 minutes and 30 seconds. There he is, Arthur Balfour, number 865, and he became a member of the Order of the Garter in 1922. He, he even became the Prime Minister, the Earl of ba ba Belfer, you know, a pharaoh, yeah? So the, the Belfer Declaration was made by pharaoh, and you have to think about it, you know? The jaywalkers, you know, they, they didn't have any say in this. You know, nothing at all, you know. Look here. Yeah, the Nobility World Wars on this channel here, so you can find it there. So it's still there, eh? But they're trying to take it off. That's quite clear now. And um, it says, let's storm the castle. So... Yeah, it's um, it's still here on this uh, in this video, but they're trying to make it disappear. So you better save it for our descendants. Those bad things are coming up, people. You better save these things. I I can't do it. You know, I'm I I'm, I continue to put my energy in making more videos. You have to do this. Copy it, spread it all over. Like spread it like a peanut butter sandwich or your ladies well no i'm not going to say that <laughs> so you spread it and um hide it and save it because they're working on it there he is lord belfer the first earl of belfer so he was a pharaoh and that's very important it is the aristocracy so the Belfer Declaration about, you know, was a public statement issued by the British government in 1917 during the First World War, announcing support for the establishment of a national home for the Jaywalker people in Palestine, then an Ottoman region with a small minority of Jaywalkers. So it says here it was the British government that decided over the Jaywalker people. And uh, of the British uh, government, they're all aristocrats, of course, were all pharaohs. So they decided it all. And what I wanted to show you, oh, here, look. He also suffered here in blue. He also suffered from public anger at the later stages of the Boer War, counterinsurgency warfare, correct? Sir? characterized as methods of barbarism well they do, they just don't want to say it you know the english that they murdered 28000 you know 
bore, white bore Christian children, defenseless children. They just don't want to pronounce it. And especially, you know, if, um, so he was behind it as well, you know. The guy was a butcher, like, like the entire aristocracy. Look, this is why he was born. Whittingham, Whittingham House. It's a bloody castle. Look at this pharaonic thing here with four pillars. Oh yeah, it's four pillars for the concept of four. Of uh, four, that's us, the people, holding it all together. Like we are the pillars of them. And here's the concept of three. You know, there's uh, this thing all the pop stars are doing. I eh? find it everywhere on the uh, on the fronts of houses and palaces. I don't know really what it says here. Interesting. They got a nice sunroof. Whenever there is sun at all in in Britain. Yeah. So this was not a normal person, you know, this is the the upper class, high aristocracy, you know. And of course he must have been, you know, otherwise you don't become the Prime Minister of the United Kingdoms. It's impossible. So Yeah, look at look he um uh, his father was a Scottish MP, member of parliament. Oh, look, also his mother, a member of the Cecil family. She's um, she's from the Marquess of of Salisbury. Yeah, look, and look, they got the uh, the Order of the Garter uh, in their coat of arms. You see. So it's been running in the family for a long time. And it's the, the Earl of Salisbury, the Marquis of Salisbury. His godfather was the Duke of Wellington. Oh, there you go. You know. So I don't see any jaywalkers here. Not even a Rothschild or Rothschild, as you guys call it. It's nothing to do with the child. Well, they want to get after our children, though. Uh, okay. Now you can read it all yourself, but what I wanted to tell you or show you, you know, he did a lot of, he did a lot of crimes against humanity all over. It's the British nobility, even against their own sort of British people. They were, it's all one crime against another you know one crime after another sorry so here he's like the hero he's the guy who founded israel like um uh, you know you know, I, want, I want to show you uh, his personal coat of arms with the um oh there it is that's what i wanted to show you look that's uh, his order of the garter thing and um, here, this thing is a square, the black thing. It's 90 degrees, you see, because here it forms another square here with one, two, three, four, a real square, four sort of bubbles here. The bubbles like fit in into the. So it does say, you know, this square for the concept of four, then there are three stars for the concept of uh, three. So it does say square and compass. And of course it says square and compass, because if you're part of the Oniswaki Malipans, the Order of the Garter, you must be a, a Freemason. You know, it's not possible otherwise. And, there, and then there are three sort of, what is it, a ferret. And this is red, of course, for the Old World's Order, where they all come from. And uh, this is probably the coat of this animal. It's a ferret, isn't it? Let's have a look if it's a ferret or not. So it was an order of the gods, eh? and, and and that's what it all has to do with, you know. The uh, the pharaohs wanted to have their jaywalker slaves back, you know. And Rothschild, you know, uh, Baron de Rothschild, it all pals with the, with the British nobility. Well, you know, is the Jaywalker nobility, who are not Jaywalkers, they all, they all are pharaohs, but let's call it Jaywalker nobility, just as we have English nobility or French nobility or German nobility. Um, Rothschild, 
you know, he wanted to have his slaves and rule over their slaves, you know, in, in where, where they come from, you know, from Zion. So this is the whole reason for Zionism. It's Pharaoh who wanted to run away, wet back, slaves back, you know, who were quite smart, you know, to just run away. Very smart. So a ferret, eh? Three ferrets here. Well, let's have a look. A ferret, a ferret, a ferret, a ferret. Well, yeah, it's a ferret. Oh, it looks like a ferret. Total ferret, eh? Just gnawing, you know, the all our rights away under our feet, just like today. And his equally pharaonic nobility pal of Lord Belfer was the Baron of Walter de Rothschild, or Rothschild in English, who wanted the jaywalkers back because the house of Baron de Rothschild are the pharaohs entitled to rule over Judea and its recalcitrant runaway slaves, those disobedient jaywalkers, not at all being disobedient towards their god, but disobedient towards their nobility masters. And we all know this seal here is the seal of a king. It's the seal of King Solomon, a pharaoh, a, a king who was of pharaonic descent, as they all are. So this is Wikipedia, the Rothschild family. And um, look, here's their coat of arms. I know. These are pharaohs, people. This is the aristocracy. Otherwise, they wouldn't have a coat of arms, right? Look at that. All pharaohs. Well, um, oh, it looks very familiar, doesn't it? So, you know, so I don't have to go and look for if he's a member of the Order of the Garter, do I now? Because here's the symbol of the Order of the Garter. You know, you got the unicorn on one side, Mondroit, as the Templars, they took their rights, and it's not chained here. So they freed it. You see the unicorn here. And on the other side, uh, Dieu, you know, the divine right of the aristocracy as the king Th this is the logo of the order of the garter then there are three crowns which is them our masters let's assign the concept of three for the nobility usually there's only you know only one and here's the seal of solomon of course here's some this is the um you know with tail like this it is the um uh, I forgot the name. The um... okay. Um, so the problem was nobody has asked the question: Why did the nobility want to have the uh, foundation of the state of Israel? Because apparently the nobility wanted this. Why? Why does nobody answer that question or, or, you know, ask that question? It's so important because everybody is so, you know, so on, on you know, the, the religious dogmatism, you know, the slaves are divided. My religion is better than yours and, you know, and all this. And I've got a nicer skin and you don't belong here and all that, you know. And this is exactly what Pharaoh wants, you know, divide and rule. Why, why nobody asked that question? Why the nobility? But because apparently it is the nobility who founded that state of Israel. Well, the answer is very simple. Because at that moment, for quite a long time, for the last 2000 years, there were Pharaoh's nobility who didn't have a country to rule over anymore. So they found themselves in other countries and they had to split up and 
one Rothschild in, in England, another one in Paris, another one in Geneva, and another one in uh, Frankfurt. You know, because they didn't have any country anymore to rule over, because the, slave, because the slaves were gone. And that's what happened, people. The slaves were gone. They went on a jaywalk, eh? <laughs> they went on a jaywalk, eh? It's a good name for the guys, a jaywalker. You know, it's a perfect name. It's a name full of honor. Very intelligent, you know. Um, it's in their book, you know. If you take up the sword, you'll die by the sword. And, okay, they, they stuck to it, eh? Um, so let's not call it the diaspora anymore, but rather something like jaywalkers went on a jaywalk, not wanting to cross the Roman pedestrian zebra crossing. And nowadays, you know, which you can see here, nowadays people have a camping car and LED lamps. But in the old days, it looked like this, taking candles with them to see in the dark. Here you see, none of them wants to stand on the zebra, like, I did it my way. And here, after the ferret here, and the um, Lord Walter de Rothschild, Baron de Rothschild, the second author, and this is the first, first author, there's also the third author of the Balfour Declaration. Here it says, Leo Amory. So, also the first Lord of the Admiralty, Leopold Amory, was entitled to rule over Judea, then called Palestine. Leo Amory bears the name America in Demotic, A for big or pregnant, Me for pyramid, and Ri for the sun, meaning in Pharaonic the reincarnation of the big pyramid of the sun. Yeah. A me ri. Like in a me ri ka. Look, and Leo Emery, uh, they're also they're all a bunch of pharaohs. He wrote a book, My Political Life, in in a octagon. There's nothing by coincidence, people. All your accidentalists Hey, who don't believe in conspiracies, who don't like uh, conspiracy theorists, hey? well, I call you accidentalist. So it means his political life was being led by the octagon. That's why he puts an octagon around it. And underneath here, it says the unforgiving years. Well, you can't read it, but I promise you that's what it says. So they're all into secret societies. You don't know anything about it. The hidden hand, it's all secret. You know, that's, um, you don't know what's going on. Uh, it's all based upon a lie, which is their first weapon. So his political life was completely led by the octagon of the Knights Templars. And he was in the army. He was the first lord of the admiralty. You know, Octogon, the admiralty. And the fourth author of the Belfer Declaration was Viscount Alfred Milner. All four of them are pharaoh's nobility, splitting up the world amongst themselves, as if it were a game of monopoly. Only problem, how do we bring the wetbacks back, those jaywalker runaway slaves? We can't have a, an empire without any slaves. How are we going to do this, eh? So you see a Viscount, and apparently he was also a Baron. I don't know how they do it, being a Baron and a Viscount. And I guess some other people don't like him very much either. It says here, Demon Chief of the Seven Deadly Sins. This one was a very dangerous one. Well, all of them. 
So here he's standing with the hidden hand. You know, so, oh, he must have been a Order of the Garter as well. So, well, let's go and have a look, shall we now? Here's in South Africa, you know, killing, murdering 28,000 innocent white Christian South African children. So, again, you know, you Nubians and also Indians, you know, how come, you know, the white man is being murdered everywhere and in concentration camps used as slaves. How come? I mean, who's doing it if the white man himself is the slave and being murdered and in concentration camp? So who's doing it, eh? You know, but you probably don't want to think about that, eh? Because it's so much easier to say the white man did it and go and cry or the, the jaywalkers did it. You know, instead of do some good old real profoundly thinking about who really done it. So here, Alfred Milner, the first Viscount Milner. Well, you can fill up a whole five hour documentary or 10 hour documentary only about this guy and his crimes. I can tell you, I can tell you that. He also has uh, ancestry from the Grand Duchy, Duchy of Hesse, who were all in the Nazis, as I've shown you in, another, in the other film. The, uh, the Royal House of Hesse. You know, probably also Rudolf Hess, part of that thing. Eh? It's not known, but look, he was in Southern Africa, well, all the crimes he did there. Eh? Ah, there it is. Look, that, well, that's what I was looking for. Let's have a look. There we go. So, see, Order of the Garter, Oniswa Kimali Pons. So that's why he's keeping his hand under his jacket, as we just saw before. So this is, of course, a pyramid, you know, probably the capstone in gold. It is gold with a deer, a deer and a capstone. Oh, how does that fit together? Or maybe this is the square. And here you got the, um, the compass, you know, like it should be a bit higher. What these things here, I have not a clue. Weird things. There are seven of these things, the holy number of the pyramid, which is the concept of three and four. So it does say in a way square and compass. And uh, it says also, Um uh, well about his, his time. Oh he was in the Afrikaner Bond. The Afrikaner Bond. There was the uh the Freemason the Freemasons in South Africa who sold out uh South Africa to the Zulus, for instance, you know. Who were not even the first persons in South Africa, you know. But okay, that's also another story. I already explained that in a couple of videos on my older channels, which they took away. <laughs> So-called anti-imperialist political party, the Africana Bond. Well, forget it. <laughs> forget it. <laughs> yeah. And it also says here, yeah, he was in Transvaal. The Second Boer War, oh, all the crimes this guy did. I eh? mm -hmm. oh, after the war, he became a businessman here in South Africa. You know, he had some good contacts with Cecil Rhodes and all that. Rhodesia. So it's all about you know making a lot of money and to protect all the money and the wealth, so they don't have to work a single day, and neither do their children and their grandchildren and all the descendants afterwards. You know, to protect it, they have to lie and lie and lie, use the newspapers, use the media, you know, to keep us under control. You know, to protect all their wealth. They they are in politics. Here it says. They are in politics, they are in business, they are in wars, they are in secret societies, and they're killing us by the millions. Right? 
And there are no jaywalkers, people. This is the aristocracy. It's a pharaoh. They're all pharaohs. It was that again, the Dulens Conference. Well, it's the next war he's in. Oh, the First World War. Also a secret gathering here. Yeah, Lord Milner is with Winston Churchill here. Well, they knew each other, of course, from South Africa. You know, how they were just like Prince Harry do some good old fox hunting in South Africa, eh? Um, children, foxes, white South African children, foxes being chased down by the nobility, eh? Well, okay, well, I can go on for hours about it. Well, there he is, uh, the first Viscount Milner of the KG, what is it, KGB? Okay, well, that makes sense. A High Commissioner for Southern Africa, arriving in the Cape in May 1897. So this was like a, a local king over the South Africans, eh? a local pharaoh. So this Viscount Milner, he also played a big role in the murder, murder of Boer children in British-made concentration camps. These are the ones responsible for it all, the killer kings and their Freemason political order of the lie. Here, look at this, Theodore Herzl Lodge, and therefore, it is no wonder that there are Freemason lodges in Israel by the name of Theodor Herzl, the guy who organized the first Zionist Congress in 1897 in Basel, Switzerland. Only 20 years, and I repeat, only 20 years before the Belfort declaration. The Freemasons would never call one of their lodges after a non-Freemason. So this means that Theodor Herzl was a Freemason, for 100% sure, and working for Pharaoh's nobility, and probably also one of them, to get those damn runaway slaves back to where they belong. This is a statement by Theodor Herzl. If whole branches of jaywalkers must be destroyed, it is worth it, as long as a jaywalker state in Palestine is created. So this cold-hearted statement of the Freemason Theodor Herzl can be interpreted in two ways. But as Zionism was too big an organization organized by the British high nobility, it must therefore be assumed that it's a cold-hearted statement by that part of Pharaoh's nobility who were lawfully entitled to own and rule over that chunk of the world where the original slaves had left and for which politi and for which political endeavor the death of a few jaywalker slaves is just some collateral damage in the eyes of pharaoh's geopolitical monopoly so finally in 1948 the British nobility founded the State of Israel as they finally had their runaway slaves back. Or does anyone here believe that the all-powerful British Empire, ruled by Pharaoh's nobility, just gave Palestine away to them jaywalkers, just like that and all for free? in 1948 and in the end the whole thing got covered up by a layer of religious hocus pocus with a magical freemason wand like in a harry potter film 
that the invisible entity in the sky made it all happen. My question is, then why going through all these troubles to make it all happen? If Harry Potter's magic wand could have done the trick right away. So the foundation of Israel was man-made, or rather Pharaoh made, with their lions, their crowns, and their castles. Here you can see a British Palestinian passport with a Templar cross and the unicorn, the Order of the Garter, the lion, and the crown. So it's quite clear through this passport that the crown, Pharaoh, the nobility, and the Order of the Garter with their Freemasons were ruling over Palestine and they are still ruling over Israel today. And just as in Australia now, with all the crimes against the people going on by the servants of the crown in their worldwide blue army uniforms, also in Palestine there was this blue worldwide army, the British Palestine Police Association under the Order of the Garter, here in blue. This represents the Order of the Garter from 1920 to 1948, and it says, a job well done. A job well done, terrorizing the people over the whole bloody world. And we can see it happening today, eh? a job well done. So here it says, from 1917 to 1948, going deeper with Britain and Palestine. Oh, that's what I just did. I went deeper with Britain and Palestine. And don't be so stubborn with each other, you know. These are the masters, and they're not the white razor either. It's Pharaoh. Wake up, people. Mystical happenings exist though, like when I received the name Gure as the name of my channel here, which was the name of my channel I made 10 years ago and which, it, which got deleted like uh, five years ago, which happened in a French castle and coming out of the void with absolutely nobody around, for which during the 30 years ago when it happened, I have found no other historical reference other than in the name of Giora, of Simon Bar Giora, exactly like Gure, the name of my channel, who apparently was a Gentile and led the jaywalkers into the first anti-Roman uprising in the year 70. So here you can see it, Giora. It's like Giure. Giora, Giure. I've never found any other word in these last 30 years since it happened um, so similar than this one. So here you find him in Rome, here, Simone di Giora. On a, um, on a stone plate in Rome where they have a lot of um, all the, um, of the slaves, all the slave uprisings of, uh, <clears throat> of, of all the peoples who wanted to free themselves of the Romans where they got murdered in Rome. They got, you know, tortured and, and dragged in the streets, you know. And here it says, uh, decapitato, decapitated. And he stands together with Vercingetorix, also decapitato. And Vercingetorix in the year 49, uh, 49 before Christ. And uh, di Giora in 70 after Christ, in the year 70. And Vercingetorix was the, the leader of the Gauls in France, in nowadays France.
and was uh, also murdered. The Romans cut up cut out his eyes and then they put him in a cage for I don't know how much time and and then dragged him in the street or the whole cage you know is to show it to the people and uh, Simon Bar Giora like here Giora the word Giora just like Giure it means Simon the son of strength so Giora or Giure it means strength or Simon the strong one and he was also apparently a non-jaywalker, a so-called Gentile. And the guy who taught the jaywalkers how to become a wetback and cross the Rio Grande, officially called the Diaspora, and leave the place to uh, continue living somewhere else. We're all in a terrible fight for life or death now in which the physical death of the entire human race after Pharaoh's bug war agenda is worse than one's own personal death. So don't be afraid to do what you need to do to save our children from these lying creatures. Because there are so many testimonies now in the internet about life after death, like this fantastic Netflix documentary called Surviving Death and many other documentaries on the subject, which existed vividly in the belief system of the ancients, taken away from us by these Romans. So we all believe Pharaoh's hopelessly useless Ten Commandments now and absolutely useless in this nasty situation we're in today. The biggest reward after is only for the brave at heart who withstood the tyranny in total engagement towards the enemy.